When I start Medicare in three years, there's three specific reasons why I am not going to select an Advantage plan. Now, I'm not saying that Advantage plans are bad. In fact, uh, it's a good option for some people. Uh, our company helps hundreds of people every month that get on the right Advantage plan. But what I am saying is there's three specific reasons that I would be concerned personally to go on an Advantage plan that you must be aware of. Now, reason number one why I would avoid an Advantage plan is because of networks, okay, networks. Every Advantage plan is going to have a network. It's either gonna be a network that's an HMO network or a PPO network. Now, uh, I described the HMO network with a smaller box uh, because there will be less choices, uh, less doctors, less hospitals, less providers that are going to see HMO patients. The PPO, larger box, why? Larger network. And the reason for that is because anyone who is on a, under an HMO contract sees patients that are on HMO plans, they're going to get paid less than they would if they were um, uh, in the PPO network. PPO networks just simply pay the providers more, and that's why you'll see more providers providers willing uh, to be in the network. But the problem is, either way you go with an Advantage plan, you're always going to have a network, which means we have restrictions, we have limitations, we have rules. Anyone on an HMO uh, network cannot go out of their network. In other words, they got to stay in their network. So if they wanted to go somewhere that went in the network, they would be out of pocket 100% because that um, HMO will not pay anything out of network. Now, the PPO will let you go out of network, but the issue is, if I stay in my PPO network, it may cost me 5000 a year if I got go out of network, it could cost me $10,000 a year. So yes, I have the privilege to go out, which is nice, but it could cost me substantially more. And so that's one of the issues when it comes to Advantage plans. You're always going to be in some type of a network. Now, if you're comfortable with that and you're you're, you're fine with the restrictions of that, uh, some HMOs require you to, to uh, uh, see your primary care doctor before you can see a specialist. Some people are fine with that. Other people uh, uh, hate that. They just don't want that kind of a restriction. They want to go where they want to go. A PPO doesn't require you to um, uh, to get a referral, but again, you're best to stay within the network, all right? And so networks can be issues for some people. And again, as you travel around the country, uh, you may be in a plan that's going to allow you to, uh, in a certain situation with emergency or urgent care, be covered, but some of those may not. And so you just have to understand how the networks are, go are going to work. Now, if someone decides to stay in Medicare A and B and they get a supplemental plan, what happens? Well, there's no networks at all. You don't have HMOs and PPOs with A and B and supplemental plans. The only thing you have to be concerned about is the provider that you want to see, that doctor, that specialist, that hospital, do they take uh, Medicare? And if they take Medicare, you can go anywhere you want. You don't have to ask them, do you take my supplemental plan? You just have to ask him, do they take A and B? Because if they take A and B, they absolutely will take your supplemental plan because you have the right to choose any secondary pair that you want. So they will take your supplemental plan of choice. So that's number one networks. Hey, just real quick before we get to the next part of the video, I just want to remind you to like, subscribe, or put a comment there in the section below and ask any questions that you would like us to address. And then just one more thing, you'll find down below in the description, uh, there's some links there where you actually can schedule an appointment to talk to one of our Medicare guides. So if you need further advice, look at all your options, uh, we'd be happy to help with that as well. Now, the second huge issue when it comes to Advantage plans is pre-authorizations, pre-authorizations. They tell us right now that about 72% of the services that a person will need while on an Advantage plan is going to have to have some type of pre-authorization. And what this simply means is that you need to maybe a test, an MRI or a CAT scan. You need to go to a skilled nursing facility. Maybe you need to be admitted to an inpatient hospital uh, for a surgery, or you need an outpatient surgery, cataract surgery, or a knee replacement. Those kinds of services are going to have to be pre-approved by the insurance company. Now, listen, uh, you can go to your primary care doctor without a pre-authorization. You can have labs without that. You can see a specialist without that. But many of the services you're going to need are going to require pre-authorization, which means what? Well, the doctor says you need the service. Well, they're going to have to contact the Advantage plan uh, to see if they agree with that. And so that Advantage plan really does have the final say-so. And sometimes they get back and, and say, no, we don't believe that you, you need that service. Uh, we believe you need therapy instead of surgery. Or they may say, we're not going to approve that uh, 
MRI. We believe, you know, you need something else. And so that can happen because, again, those plans are going to have those pre-authorizations on anything that's going to be an expensive service. So what happens? Your doctor does not have the final say-so. Hey, I had a, a particular lady that uh, uh, needed a full hip replacement on an Advantage plan. And it had to be pre-approved, of course, pre-authorizations required for hip replacements. And the Advantage plan said, no, we don't believe you need a full hip replacement. We believe that uh, the doctor can use a rod instead as a rod inserted into the hip, and that will be sufficient. And that's all she was able to get. And another lady that uh, needed a hip replacement, and uh, the, the plan said, no, you go to nine months of therapy, and then we'll revisit the possibility of a hip replacement. Again, that's all uh, that she was able to get. And it doesn't mean that people don't get hip replacement. It just simply means that just because your doctor says they believe you need it doesn't mean you're going to get that service unless the Advantage plan approves of that. And certainly they're going to do that in many occasions, but some occasions they may not because they do have the final say so, not your doctor. Okay. Now, if you decide to get a supplemental plan, a member along with your Medicare A and B, what happens? Well, uh, the doctor says you need a full hip replacement, you need a CAT scan, you need uh, uh, cataract surgery, whatever you need. Uh, that that A and B uh, never uh, doctor never <clears throat> that doctor never has to check with the supplemental plan because that supplemental plan follows A and B. All right, so there are no pre-authorizations when it comes to uh, supplemental plans. Uh, doc says you need it. Medicare says I'll cover it. End of story. Insurance company has no say so whatsoever. And so that's the second reason that I would be highly concerned about uh, being on a Vantage plan because you have to live with those rules really for the rest of your life. Hey, just real quickly, I want to let you know that uh, we're going to start a live Q&A every Thursday on Instagram. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, to be able to ask questions and uh, really engage with us about Medicare issues, uh, you can go to Instagram and find Medicare School and you can follow us and uh, we'll keep you up to date as to when uh, those uh, live Q&As are going to begin. And then that brings me to the third huge issue that comes up with Advantage plans that many, many people are not aware of. And that is this, and that is the possibility of that Advantage plan actually being your permanent plan. All right, so here's what I mean by that. Whenever someone enrolls in an Advantage plan, and let's just assume that someone starts their Advantage plan at 65. So let's say they started their Advantage plan 7-1-2022, and they're enrolled in A and B, and they decide to get an Advantage plan. What happens in this scenario in most states throughout the country is they are in what is called a trial right, trial right, okay? And that trial right gives them actually 12 months to be on their Advantage plan. And any time, any reason during that 12-month trial right, they actually uh, can get out of their Advantage plan and they can return to original Medicare A and B get a supplemental plan with no underwriting required whatsoever, okay? And they can add a drug plan. So if I have a trial right, 12 months to try it, uh, I don't like it anytime, any reason during that 12 months, go back to original Medicare A and B, get a supplemental plan of my choice and add a drug plan. No questions asked whatsoever. But here's what happens. Let's suppose that someone uh, has A and B at 7-1-2022, and let's say they're on the plan for, you know, two years. And now we're into 7-1-2024, and they decide, hey, I no longer uh, want to be on my Advantage plan. I want to get off my Advantage plan. Now we have two rules. So to switch to a supplemental plan, whatever one you want to go to, now we can only switch during the open enrollment period. So I have to switch between October 15th to December 7th, plus what happens, I have to go through underwriting. Okay, so now underwriting is required, right? And so what that means is we're gonna have to add, what that means is I'm gonna have to ask you 25 or 30 health questions, check all your medications that you're taking now for the last 24 months to know what you've been treated for, uh, and then we're gonna to have to get a statement from your doctor called an attending physician statement. Okay, and so underwriting is now required. Now, as long as you don't have any uh, health issues, then you can get off of your Advantage plan and you can go on a supplemental plan, and that would happen January 1 of that year, right? So I have to take action uh, uh, during the open enrollment season, 
got to go through underwriting, and if I pass underwriting, then that policy would start January 1. Um, uh, no problem. But if there's any health issues going on, that insurance company, because now I have to go through underwriting, can actually deny me coverage. So you could have something as simple as um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. You could be an insulin-dependent diabetic that's happened to have some kind of complication, maybe retinopathy or neuropathy. You'll not get approved. Uh, people who have AFib in their medical records, even one incident, will never get approved to make that switch. Uh, certainly anyone that's had cancer in the last 36 months, uh, anyone that's anticipating any kind of a serious surgery is not going to get approved. And so what happens is there's certain medical conditions or even medicines that you take where that insurance company says, no, we're not going to approve that policy. So what happens then? Now you're going to be on that uh, Medicare Advantage plan for the rest of your life. It's become a permanent policy. And so many agents don't talk about the fact that if you stay on it beyond that 12 months, then uh, now uh, you have to medically qualify to get off of that plan. And if you can't do it, then you'll be stuck, of course, with the Advantage plan. Now, I do want to emphasize something. Not everyone has a trial right. This varies state to state, a lot of different rules. Uh, so I'm assuming that if you do have a trial right, then you could move anytime, any reason. But if you don't have one, um, and there's certain states and certain rules that apply where people don't get them. But there is a time that you do not have to worry about a trial right. I'm going to explain that to you. And that's this. Once I first go on Medicare, let's say I'm going to start my Medicare July 1st of 2022. What happens is I have this thing called a Medigap, Medigap open enrollment period. And again, let's say I'm going to start my Medicare A and B. What happens is this. Six months prior to starting my Medicare, I can apply for a MedSup plan. And that company cannot go through any underwriting. They have to issue the policy. And that Medigap open enrollment period now will last for another six months beyond uh, my, my initial enrollment into Medicare. So in my example, that would be August, September, October, November, December, and January. So all the way up until January, in my example of 2023, I am still in my six month window and I can still get a supplemental plan. I can switch supplemental plans. If I had an advantage plan, I'm still during the six month window, I can move to um, a supplemental plan even if I don't have a trial right. So we have the six month window. But once this six month window is open and, and closed in my example here, so from now on, February 2023, if I ever want to get a new supplemental plan, a new supplemental uh, letter, a new supplemental carrier, now I'm going to have to medically qualify to make that move. And that's what makes this Medigap open enrollment period very, very important period of time. So I can apply six months before I start Medicare and then six months after. And any time in that window, there's no underwriting. That insurance company has to take you. We call that your guaranteed issue right. All right. And so those are the things that you have to be conscious of when you get an Advantage plan. And again, that's why I would avoid them. All three of those features to me are frightening. I don't want to have to deal with networks for the rest of my life and the limitations and restrictions that they uh, that come with them. I certainly don't want pre-authorizations. I want my doctor to have the final say-so, not some insurance company. And then thirdly, I want to make sure that I'm not stuck on a plan that I can never get off for the rest of my life. And that's what can happen with the Advantage plan.